So again, this is just a preview of what we're about to get into. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, so um, yesterday we were, um, like Sugi said, um, we kind of ended on um, brainstorming possible solutions. Um, so we were able to brainstorm a little bit. Um, and today I just want to kind of like remind us um, about the mindsets and the different guidelines to kind of like think about. Um, so starting with imagination, um, again, I said yesterday that, you know, when we're working with younger kids, um, it's usually like easy um, for them to use their imagination because it's so huge, right? Um, so again, when you're thinking about your prototype or what you're going to design, open your mind. Uh, think back to like when you were six or seven. Um, get creative. What's the silliest idea that you can think of and what's the biggest idea? All right, so it'll be really helpful um, when you're thinking about possible solutions. Um, this is totally a judgment-free space. Um, again, all of our ideas matter. Um, so don't be afraid to say whatever comes to your mind because it may not be. Um, it may be, you know, the solution that you may need. Um, and then everything's possible ties into imagination. So don't worry yourself with the improbability of things. Um, right now, we're not worried about like limitations. Um, so just think big. Uh, and then below we have some guidelines that um, it's really also important to think about, um, which the first one says, raise many ideas without thinking of limitations, which anything can happen. Um, kind of like going into that mindset. And then um, last but not least, one place to look for inspiration um, will be to think about other cleaning devices that we have experienced ourselves, maybe at home or in our neighborhood. Um, yesterday, we had a picture of a vacuum cleaner. How does that pick up trash? How does that clean things? I wonder if I can use that or any kind of aspects of that for my own prototype. So what other cleaning devices can you think of that you've experienced? Um, and then to the right, um, we just wanted to show you how we do this kind of like step um, with uh, younger kids. So this um, photo or um, drawing is from uh, our on-site preschool, um, the discovery school. And so they um, kind of highlighted the problem that they were gonna be working with and ways to solve it. So at, if you can see it, I know it's kind of small, but at the top, it states the problem, which says problem, friends are sick. Straight to the point, I like it. <laughs> um, so that's the problem that they're dealing with. And then below are just like a series of solutions that they all came up with together. So um, I'm gonna try to read maybe a few if I can see it. So some like, they say, hey, the virus is going around. So how can we fix it? And then you can see it says like soap and water for 20 seconds and then they drew what that looked like to them just like a simple like sketch um some other people said cover coughs and sneezes um and they drew <laughs> what that looked like to them as well um and this is like really really like you know great you know when preschoolers are realizing like hey we need to do this to, like fix this problem um take temperature they have like a thermometer there and then blow nose with tissue. So again, uh, brainstorming can look like anything, but this is just like kind of like an example of what it looks like to a, pre a preschooler or anyone like just younger. So kids who we usually deal with on a daily basis. Um, okay, so I think we are ready to move on to the next slide. I believe. Okay, yes. So, um, again, yesterday we thought about this problem with the story, and then we thought about possible um, solutions um, to fix this problem. So now we are going to move into the really, really fun and exciting part, usually, um, which is making and trying your prototype. So this, how is this going to work? We're going to kick off together, um, and then like maybe like five minutes um, of like prototyping together, we're gonna break out into groups where you're gonna be able to finish designing and building your prototype. 
We're gonna be able to try it out um, with your try model. And then we're gonna be able to look back and reflect on what, how was this process for us? What worked, what didn't, and how can we show others what we made? All right, so we're gonna be able to do all of this in our session and I'm really, really excited. But um, Sagit now is going to just go over kind of like our uh, materials and get us started on like the kind of activity. All right. Um, so the next slide, please. Okay. So one thing that we uh, thought is when now when all the kids are at home, uh, maybe one way to do it is to start the year by asking kids to have like a bag or a box that they create, they have at home. I don't, I just I want to make sure I see. Yeah. So this is, for example, I just took a box from my house, but it can be like a bag or, or, or a tray. And, and then gradually throughout the year or the days, put things in that box that they can, we call it the prototyping box. So in my box, I have some uh, curtains, I have an old shirt. I put some boxes that I find, I put like a rubber band. I even took some things from the kitchen. <laughs> uh, and different stuff inside. So it can be gradual, yes? Like, like the first week and one of the things we Kind of do with the kids in our um, preschool, but also with older, we suggest you can have like even a show and tell of materials. So when we uh, when we are these when people who are professional designers and engineers, one thing that is really important is to work and feel materials and see and see what the materials give for you and what it resists, you know, like materials have agency too. They can go with you uh, away and communicate to you something, but they can also stop you. So for example, taking this aluminum foil and also hear the noise, kind of noise it makes and what can you, is it flexible or not flexible? What does, what can I do with it? Can I make a ball? Um, Reflect. So this is uh, one thing that we can experience with kids and each of them will have a, something else. So maybe first we model to them and then each have a turn to show a material that they found and kind of like explore it. And what we have in the slide is kind of like a way also to categorize them. We can turn it into a scavenger hunt or uh, for materials that lasted for a month or for a day or for five minutes. And then we can also let kids choose categories, choose together categories. Here are categories that we chose that relates to this specific cleanup uh, thing. So we have things that connect. And I showed you my rubber band, but I also have some other stuff in my box that can be connecting even things that maybe we don't even think that they connect. How can I connect things with my fork? Um, so the beauty of it is that, you, you know, there's also an opportunity here because in a classroom, maybe you all have the same materials, but now that kids have different materials in, in different, uh, then we can also see how different materials lead to different solutions. Um, I also see there are people write in the chat stuff. So let's look, um, Ruben, if you can help me. Uh, yes, yeah, so if, of course, if there is a possibility, and I know that some uh, district send materials to kids or some teachers can do it, some basic things is always good because we know that houses have paper, some not, some, uh, places have, you, you know, I think that the connecting materials is the piece that I would mostly give, be, make sure that kids have because it's very hard to prototype without anything to connect. So like rubber bands or some tape and anything else, it's pretty much 
you can use even from nature, take leaves and barks and, and, and stuff. So just the connecting is always the part that is, is the hardest. So some paper clips, if it's possible. But also, you know, we can say, oh, you can use your headband, yeah, to connect stuff. So pretty much it gives the opportunity for kids to go and search for things that they can do. But yes, from I, if you can get some things for kids, it's always, it's always good. Um, okay, I'm just looking at the chat to see if there's yeah, recycled material is always good, yes. Yeah. And yeah, upcycling um, boxes. I'm sure that kids have some boxes from, you know, things that are used. So, and we like a lot in the museum, we go outside and collect barks from eucalyptus. It's great. Uh, and other stuff uh, that, Ruben, what else we collect there, yeah? Yeah, like, it's, it's amazing what you can, like, build with, like, just natural materials in general. Um, so, yeah, we collect, like, bark, uh, like, long sticks, um, like, eucalyptus, um, I think they're called eucalyptus pods, like, the little things that drop out of the trees. Um, yeah. Big leaves, yeah, so... And then we, yeah, really, really think of spending time and just, you know, exploring the materials and their properties is super, super inspiring and helpful. And then you'll see later that we're gonna do in this workshop is create a model, which is a little bit trash, you know, the trash that we have in the water. So just like, yeah, I'm gonna use this paper and I just put it, and make some tiny things so I can test them. And as a trash, I will use this aluminum foil and make a, a ball out of it for trash. But so, but we will discuss this later in the. Yeah. So um, just from a show of hands, um, was it, everyone able to like collect some materials um, for this activity? Are you? Or, do you have it near you? Okay, cool, cool. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Okay, awesome. I was actually, um, I'm only attending this session for the TK second grade, so I, I didn't um, gather any material, so I'll just um, watch what you guys are doing. Okay, um, you can, if you want, you can just take a few minutes um, of just kind of like, finding things around your home that you feel will work great for this um because we're gonna get again we're gonna get started together and then that way you can like have it when you break out into your session or your group um but only if you want to but yeah and also for the prototype session we give um a long time to prototype so it will give you also time to go and get gather some materials just so you can start doing stuff yeah okay okay so i think we're actually ready to move to the next slide um, I want to give us some time to do this. So, let's see. Okay, so uh, now uh, we're going to start switching gears um, and begin designing our prototype. So, again, um, oh, also, I, I've been hearing like a lot of kids in the background. So, this will really be a good opportunity um, if you have kids at home right now uh, to ask them to join you. Um, and be kind of like your assistant engineers. Um, that way you all can like bounce off um, ideas with each other. Um, but yeah, okay. So for this part of the workshop, um, we're gonna encourage you, you don't have to do it now, but maybe like when you break out into groups, we're gonna encourage you to like tilt your laptop screen if you can. That way you can like show the process of you all like actually like making, using your hands to Play with some different materials. If you have a laptop um, or just like a screen that can go up and down. Um, just because I feel like it's helpful when others are like seeing what other people are doing. Um, I think Carrie had a wonderful question earlier that, hey, like if I feel inspired by someone, someone else's idea, um, do I still have to stick with my own? No way. 
Uh, engineers love to collaborate with one another. And by showing what you're doing, that's a way of collaborating, collaborating. So don't feel like you have to stick with your original idea. For those who maybe made a sketch yesterday, you totally don't have to go by that sketch. You can totally change it up if you want. Um, so just know that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to start us off, uh, before we go into breakout groups, um, to just demonstrate how I personally like, like to start designing and kind of show some like strategies and questions that I ask students when they start. Um, so, okay. let's see. So I'm going to show you, um, Oh, actually, I'm gonna show you some prototypes that I made. So yesterday, I made a couple of prototypes um, for this activity already. Um, so I made this one, which is was to grab the trash. Um, and you can see that it's, it's kind of small enough to fit into like a, a bin of water. And so this part was gonna be able to grab trash and collect it. But if you can, if you notice that just with this small thing, it probably can't collect that much trash. So, and it will have to move in the water. And so, I also made this one, which if you can see behind here, is kind of like a, a burlap, like kind of like a gnat. So this was gonna like collect the trash in here, which was gonna hold more trash, obviously, but this will also, was gonna have to be able to move when I put it in the water. So I got to thinking and I was like, all right, making like a movable cleanup device is cool. But what if I make something that's like stationary, that doesn't move, that can just float in the water and collect trash that way. So I sketched this out. You can see, again, <laughs> I am not an artist, uh, but if you can tell, I can explain. So this is kind of like, um, kind of like a, a wire of some sort or just something that can like hold nets that hangs below here. That way when the waves in the water flow pushes the trash this way in this direction, it will collect the trash and then somehow it will filter out the things that belong in the ocean and then keep the things that doesn't. So that is my idea that I plan to make. Um, right now. Um, I'm going to turn on my screen right here. Oops. Okay. All right. So let's start. And then my friends, feel free to like start uh, making your prototype whenever you want, but I'm just going to start um, doing mine and then just kind of tell you what I'm doing talk about it a little, okay? But yeah, feel free to get started whenever you want. Like this. <laughs> all right, so can you all see like all the different materials that I have? This, okay, cool. All right, um, so again, um, I'm gonna, I'm trying to make something that like floats something that will be long and something that will catch trash. Uh, so, Robin, just a second. Maybe Marisa, we can uh, stop the slide so we can see better. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Slideshow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then we can see also everyone else. Yeah. Sorry. And then maybe just before you start, Ruben, if people have questions so far, let's, let's just... Okay. You can either, we are a, a small group, we can just unmute ourselves and ask or put it in the chat, whatever you feel like. Okay. okay. So um, I'll just get started, Sigi, and then maybe you could like um, facilitate. Yeah, if anyone has things that they wanna ask, please put it in the chat. Um, we would love, we see some people started working. We would love if you can a little bit tilt it so we, because super curious. <laughs> Great, 
see hands. We want to see hands. One other way to do it is actually join. I did it. I'm going to do it again now. Join. I, I joined the Zoom with my phone and I kind of like put it in a way that you can see my hands and my face. But so once Ruben will do it, I will also demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ruben, you can go. Okay. Um, so if you can remember what my idea was, um, I for the base, like kind of like the wire, it needs to like be able to bend, right? So I'm wondering, what kind of materials that I, do I have that can bend easily? I don't know about the tongue depressor. Um, can this bend? It's a toilet roll. No. Um, foil is flexible. It can bend. Maybe I can use this. Or what about wires? Wire, string, it's flexible, it can bend. So maybe I'll just try two different things. I'll use the foil and I'll use wires as well. And so I'm going to start. And then for the sides, um, I'm going to need some kind of anchor to like hold it in the water. And so again, I showed you the toilet rolls, which would be also be kind of like a good idea. And I also have egg cartons that I feel like attach to the end of my kind of like wire floating thingy. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> so I, I can try both. Um, I'm just going to like use scissors to like punch a hole in here. Um, if kids are like not sure where to start or just having kind of like a challenging time getting started, um, some things that I like to kind of like ask them is, again, going back to what's their prior knowledge on cleaning devices, like what, what kind of tools, devices have you seen? Um, kind of getting them um, thinking about how they clean things. Um, vacuum, street cleaners. Um, and then from that, we can ask them, okay, so a, a broom sweeps trash. How would you want your cleaning device to clean or remove trash? Would you want it to grab? Would you want it to sweep it up like a broom? Would you want it to reel it in? What are you thinking? And then from that, <laughs> you can just kind of go off what they say. Um, I'm curious though, um, from your, you all's experience, how do you, how do you engage your, um, your children and their, your students in their learning? Like what kind of questions do you ask them? Um, if you, if you want, you can write it in a chat, like for some like kind of like prompts that you use with students. All right, so I have this so far. So as you can see, <laughs> Well, wait, because I have two zooms. I have to so I see uh, that people ask about this Zoom with kindergarten. So this summer we worked with from preschoolers to fifth graders on Zoom doing these workshop, and some kids were in summer camp together and some were at home. And we did the same thing on Zoom, everyone together, working, showing their hands, uh, switching to the hands. So it's also feel more calm that you don't see her face, but you work in a way. And whenever kids wanted also to ask a question, and we just met them and then went, and then the other day met again and they continued. So they had a chance to continue at home. And they, yeah. Some kids also join other people from their family to help them. So it became, for some, a family event, which was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so. We were curious if, like, if you want to put in prompts that you use with students um, to, add, to add to what Ruben said, please add it here. And I think Ruben will show now his model for like trying and then we will break everyone to the 
so you can continue in smaller groups to prototype and share your ways and ideas. Okay. All right, so, so far, you all, if you want to just take a look at what I have so far, I have my wires are just, I don't know what to call these just yet on my prototype. So let's just call them wire, what they are. <laughs> wires, and then these are kind of like the anchors. They weren't staying that well, so I just used tape to get it to stick. Um, and I'm going to continue to work on it when we break out into groups. But um, before we do that, um, if we can just go back to the presentation. If, um, oh, uh, if we can just have the next slide, please. That'd be great. Thank you. So this is designing, building model. Okay. And so um, when you're ready to test it out, you can use your trying model, um, which again, could be pretty much anything. So for these kind of like activities, uh, we usually use like a small bin and just like add water in them uh, or in it. Um, it could be like a Tupperware. If you have a Tupperware um, at your home, it can be like a, a bowl, anything. It just needs to have water and you can use your sink. Um, you can use just the table. You can put like kind of like your found trash on the table and just use that. But um, just don't fret if you don't have this available. And then for the next thing, you'll need a variety of different kinds of trash. Um, it'll be helpful if you can find trash that like sinks all the way to the bottom, some trash that floats, some kind of trash that kind of expands once it's in the water. Coffee filters are great for that from experience. <laughs> And then last but not least, uh, you just add everything together and hey, you have your trying model. And so this is gonna be mine. If you can see, I eat a lot of fruit snacks still. I love these. So I added those to the mix, some coffee filters and some foil, like Sagit said. But again, it can be literally so many things. Um, cool. And then you have your trying model and then last but not least, next slide please. You're gonna be able to try and retry uh, when we break out into groups. So once you get to this step, um, I just want to encourage you all to like ask what happened when you test when you tried out your prototype. Um, did it work? Did it not work? And then next slide, please. One more, one more thing. And then from those um, from the answers that you arrive at, you can start thinking. Hmm, I noticed. I wonder, and like, what if I change X? What will happen to my prototype? I wonder if I add X, Y, Z. I wonder how different will my prototype be? And what did you notice when you tested it out? Um, these are all great engaging questions and that will lead um, your students to like reflect on their process and to make their design even better. Um, Sigit, would you like to add anything more? Yeah, just two things. One, of course, uh, I, for example, couldn't use water here in my house, so you don't need to do a tray with water. This can also be tested. Also, engineers and designers, not always we can do all the modeling of how the place that we're going to test. So even just on the floor, some trash and just try it or on your desk, just put some uh, stones or, or different things and, and try it. So, no need for water. If you do want to do an activity with water, it's also an opportunity to even think what sinks and what floats um, and even use a small box, like a small bowl with it. So it's another opportunity, but again, it's not, it doesn't have to. Now, another thing that we notice is that when we tilt our uh, cameras, we it's hard for us to see other people. So we kind of like try to tilt a little bit, but also we can go, go back and Tilt so other people wouldn't see what we do and back to, to, to see ourselves what other people do. So different options. And if you play with it and find other ways, please share with everyone. Um, because now we're gonna break into small prototyping and sharing groups of three to four people, and we'll give you uh, it's 10 to 11, so we'll give you 
15 minutes for doing it. Because I see also that some people started, you can make another prototype, you can show other people. So, and at the end, after 15 minutes, if you can take a picture of your prototype, even if it's not finished, uh, take a picture and you see on the slideshow, just after prototyping, there's a Jamboard link and a slide number eight. If you can upload using the Jamboard, upload a picture of your prototype. So we're gonna have at the end a gallery of all the different prototypes. And any questions, send us in chat. I'm just gonna look at the chat to see. Um, Will our Jamboard be the same number as our group for breakout rooms? Like No, we want all, good question. We want all the pictures one in the same Jamboard. So there's a link for Jamboard group number one. It's the next slide. See on the slide eight, it also have a sticky note saying upload your here. So yeah. we have all your pictures there. Cool. Okay, so we have. All right, happy prototyping everyone. Oh, are we? Okay, cool. Thank you.
uploaded your photo yet of your prototype, um, be sure to do that. If you're still working on it though, uh, continue working on it. Yeah, and you don't need to have a final one to take a picture. So you can take a picture, upload, and then um, continue working. until everyone gets back. So we're adding it to the Jamboard, but which slide eight, sorry. Okay, now I see it. Ruben, we're all back from the breakout rooms. Oh, cool. We can just upload the things, yeah? All the time. Okay. All right, yeah, continue uploading them if you want, if you haven't. Um, how, how does everyone feel? Do you have fun? <laughs> Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, I, I'm taking a look at some of these and the Laker, these are amazing. So, how do you mean it? Make them smaller. It doesn't. Look... Oh, the corner. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Bottom. Yeah. So each corner has a different thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like that people put sticky notes with some explanations and names. Please do it. It's a great idea. Gina, could you remind me what uh, you called, uh, starts with an I, like my, you were calling it my prototype? Interceptor. Interceptor, okay. I'm going to put it on there. That's a big word, huh? <laughs> yeah, interceptor. I don't know why I couldn't remember. Will you guys help me? I have the Jamboard on slide eight, and I'm dragging my photo from the desktop to drop it, but it doesn't want to do that. So you actually want to click on that little mountain that set, it looks like a little picture with mountains oh, yeah. on the left side of that pool. And Add you're going to want to drag it once you open that. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> I love your cat. <laughs> I woke him up. His name's Tony. I want to see the 
Rakers, sticky, sticky, how it works in live. Who's this one? Okay. That's, that's can me. You, can you show it to the camera? Is it? Yeah, I can. Oops. Well, it already worked. It got this cotton ball on my maker station. Oh, cool. <laughs> but it, but it, and it got dirt and stuff. But, um, <laughs> You know, it has some flaws. Ruben was in my group yesterday, so I already kind of thought about how it might work in water and that that could just eliminate the ability to be so sticky. And then what if it's so sticky that, like, what if that's a sea urchin and I didn't want it to get that? So I didn't know outside of a robot how to solve that problem. But similarly, the raker is the same idea, but with a claw, you know. But, um, Tracy's daughter's design, Sophia made one that um, had a collecting thing. So that, that I didn't solve for collecting. So it, it like grabs, but then it, this one would have to be lifted up to be changed out or cleaned. And then this one would just bring it to an area or something. I hadn't gone that far. Is Sophia's uh, image here? Um, yeah, she's on the jam board. Hers is the one, the floaty vacuum cleaner in the cups on the back. I don't know if Tracy left. No, I'm oh, here. Tracy. Tracy can talk about. She's got, I don't so, know. Yeah. And Augie made one too. Gina was both my children's both teacher, had great kindergarten teacher. So <laughs> they're at jujitsu right now, so they can't explain. But this was Sophia's with the filter, oh, the coffee yeah. cup filter. And they were pretty much just jumped into it. I didn't, I gave them a little bit of the story, but they didn't do like the design picture or anything. And How then they call Augie, it this one? What was that? What is the name of that one? That you this showed? was the vacuum. Oh, the vacuum, cool. And then my son was thinking of doing like a submarine. He ran out of time before he had to get it. That would be at the bottom and kind of collect everything. Oh, I like it. Wow. <laughs> submarine but they loved good... it. They were into it like, then they had to go to class, so they'll probably come back later. <laughs> um, anyone else want to share? We really want to see everyone. We're not as big group, so we would love to, even if it's not finished, you know? Okay, I will. I was trying to. <laughs> I am back. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to um, take a picture and upload it, but I'm also having trouble with that but and I'm not done and I wasn't here for the last session so this is my idea where I would have a series of filters starting with you know um bigger holes than medium than small so animals could still get out they would be anchored somehow maybe to the bottom of the creek and just skimming along the top because plastic usually is um for the most part floats along the top um so I was went and unfortunately I took all my recycling out and was trying to go back in the bin and find my stuff. But I started one filter. <laughs> Actually, this would be the first one, sort of. And then a second one, and then a third one with smaller holes somehow being held up. No. This is great. What is? What did you use for the net? Uh, the <laughs> my daughter's cordage for her beading from her beading set. And then <laughs> the <back of> <laughs> so. Great. And some, you know, some quick weaving here, but yeah. I, I wouldn't make it very far in a survival show if I was being kind. <laughs> this so, is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you like implement that, that weaving aspect. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so, like, so artistic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Gina, do you want to share with us? I see some things you have, Miss Gina. Oh, well. These are in our kitchens, I bet. Um, these, these netted bags for avocados and oranges. And, and then mine, I used a strawberry basket um, and a back scratcher. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then some rubber bands and this little, uh, you know, to keep the potato chips fresh. Uh -huh. and, then, uh, and it worked to scoop up the trash. Oh. Not, I didn't try it in the water, but... Um, on my carpet, I could see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like the, the combination of materials that are not from the recycle bin, that are actual things that like the 
back spread. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you feel exhausted from scooping it, you can always. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm nice. loving the variety of like different modes of like how your designs are going to like remove the trash. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. Flora, do you want to share? So this is my little net thing. Um, it's actually a post-it note holder. Um, and I put some tin foil on the back so that the trash couldn't get out. But on the front, it's open so the trash can go in. And it has a little like escape route on the top if a little uh, fish or something would get stuck, as well as on the sides. And then these in like real life would have little scabby things on them to stab like plastic bottles, but hopefully they wouldn't be too strong so that they don't stab the fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Good. That's nice. it. Who wants to be next to show? They still have one or two people who, yeah, Cindy. Oh, wow, this is a hard one, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a grappler just to grab I think you know this is a prototype these are a little too soft but then it wouldn't hurt fish I guess that's another plus but yeah, yeah. so and then the plastic twist ties from bread bags ah oh, nice I save those because they're bad to throw away because they're covered in plastic <sighs> so that's it <laughs> Very nice. Use plastic to save us from the plastic. <laughs> cool. Willow, do you have something to share? Not really. I, I just was inventive and I grabbed the thing and I was like, okay, well, I would use this. Yeah, cool. And my question is, I'm like, okay, I know, I know what the tool would be, but then what I start to think about is how would I sort the things that were supposed to be in the water from the things that are not supposed to be in the water. And that because the top layer of the water is where a lot of other things live. So yeah. how do we determine live from not live? How do we design a machine or some kind of tool that can detect that? Because yeah. we wanna leave the plants in the water, we wanna leave the, you know, all the good things in the water. So how do we just get out the plastic? Yes. Good question that I think a lot of people here <laughs> do. Like we see yeah. in Al's like trying to do different sizes and flora that give the animals escape. But it's also about plants maybe that don't know how to escape. So <clears throat> how to do it. Uh, Carrie talked about the sea urchin that may be attached and how to take it off. So yeah. It's, uh, it's a, a challenging, and I'm sure like engineers, uh, you know, and designers, uh, I'm not sure that they solved it, although there are some things that people do to remove trash, but I'm curious if they found a way to do it. So it's a good thing to think about. Um, Yeah, I think we're enough. A small, uh, let me let us know. Like we can do a um, reflection together of how to. What do you want to take it for, uh, with you? Um, what do you think you can use? You're gonna use this, or how? Or or we can break to smaller groups. So it's what do you think? What we should do? Is, is this group the whole group? Okay, great. So. I'm going to mute myself and let with you share. So I think, um, oh, oh, go for it. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I didn't know. So you could go and then me. <laughs> oh, no. I just want to make sure that everyone knows the prompts of languages. Let me see.
so yeah, I, I just attached like the questions um, to think about in the chat. Um, if you want to um, answer some of them or just say how this process was for you, go for it. I was thinking about, um, I don't know, earlier before we went to go make in our small groups, someone was saying about doing this over Zoom and then um, Saget talked about their experience with the preschoolers over summer. And I was thinking just how as a routine on Zoom, some kind of routine for um, design maker challenge, how the kids would just look forward to that. You know, as I'm thinking of my planning in the future and the things that they enjoy doing, how that would actually help kids feel like, oh, this is Wednesday, this is the day that we create, you know, I just could see this being a really powerful sort of engagement um, weapon. So um, I really, I could see doing a lot of this in a lot of ways and, and in the spring distance learning, while I didn't um, maybe do as thorough of a job as linking to the phenomenon and all of that, but certainly the maker projects were some of the most popular, so. The materials is the place where I get stuck because we have, a, in Kentfield, we have a very diverse population from the extremely affluent that has like actually a craft room that's fully loaded down to someone maybe in a multifamily apartment with very limited, um, so I tend to, like somebody said, the recycled materials tends to be the way I lean um, because then I expect that of everyone just to be creative with that. But I do think those connective materials are important. So I think I would want to supply them with some of those basic connection things that everybody may not have access to, um, you know, in their craft rooms. So, but I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. I'm curious. I, I want everyone to, to have a chance to talk, but I'm also curious if you can put in chat some, you said that you did different makers stuff with them. So what, what were they? If you can share with us, it would be great. I'll put some of them in the chat and then, um, yeah. Um, well, Gina had in her class that the kids built boats in the spring and my kids were so engaged with that. And then you added pennies to see how many pennies to sink it. And then, you know, if they wanted to try it again. So we did that with my kindergartner and, um, then I did it with my second graders as assignment and I, the feedback from my parents was just, you know, the kids loved it and just engaged and, I like um, Carrie's idea about, you know, just having Wednesdays be that, you know, something to look forward to for the, for the maker stuff or, you know, some kind of engineering project. Cause it does, it, the engagement is great with that. Um, I, I can see a challenge being that uh, parents have to help with the kindergartners, you know, that it's gotta be a, a, like a family project that you can't just have these materials in front of a little five-year-old and you know they could get frustrated i mean it, they would be super excited and and it would be worthwhile because their imagination would take it on but i think the the parent might need to oversee or um you know help with the tape or it, it might be like a two-person construction project yes um I can tell you that sometimes, so yeah, when we are with kids, we, like you said, there's an adult sometimes to help. One of the things that we also encourage is to say, oh, this is a motor and, and just go with imagination, you know, like you don't have to have a working uh, thing even. And, and then I think it's easier because it's more about how you imagine things and not like creating something. So then the testing is more imaginative than really. Mm -hmm. And one thing, like, it's just like the kids worked hard on these projects and then sharing them out. And that's where I like posting the pictures on the jam board or so kids can see other ideas. Um, but for 20 kids to share their projects, I think that we would lose interest really quick. So maybe try the breakout rooms or 
I don't know. Like, I mean, if you were needed to do something like really quick, uh, I mean, you can even re like just show like all have all your students show their designs. Put the mode in like gallery mode, and just show like their designs, and then maybe call out a few like what did you what do you notice what like what does they, what do they have that you don't have you know like just really so they can quickly get an idea of hey that design looks different than mine or that design looks similar to mine um and then you can kind of like initiate if they want to know more you can initiate that um that, that reflection and feedback a little bit more um but yeah i totally understand that I see that Flora, you mentioned CISO, you know, who mentioned CISO, Carrie mentioned CISO. Uh, I know that some people, some districts have it and some not. So it's a really cool platform. Um, categories, yeah. Uh, Flora talked about categories, it's great. Oh, I see. Carrie, thank you for writing all the different projects. Super cool. Yeah, if anybody does use Seesaw, I can share the activity and you can edit in Seesaw to make it your own because these were just literally maker activities that were kind of one-offs. They weren't necessarily tied into a curriculum like this is well thought out. Um, so I can put my email in. I don't know how to, I don't know if there's like a dumping ground for this, um, for shared resources in this whole, um, experience if there's a place to park that because i don't know Anybody? it's a very good idea i would talk with i don't know if it's set but i'll ask elin that inspired by all these things people will have a place where people share because already in this session so many good ideas and so i'll ask that yeah it could be it could be a slide we add to the slide deck because everyone has access to that so that could be a possibility um, Oh, great, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> Just an Already idea. Solution. Yeah, sounds cool. Okay, I think I will say thank you for everyone. Uh, yeah. For sharing you. all your ideas and being with us. Uh, thank you. It's fun. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you either later or sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will leave our also. Um, I think in the follow-up, um, the county will send all of our email addresses and feel free to contact us and to keep uh, discussing whatever. If you try it and you get some things you want to ask about stuff, we are happy to share and, and send any materials that works for us. We are happy to hear what works for <laughs> you. Thank you, thank you.